For today's video, I went Craigslist knife battling on the streets for the PC equivalent of a Toyota Prius with 24 inch chrome spinner wheels on it. But before we have a look at that, it's time for a word from Linode. This video is sponsored by Linode, which is a powerful and affordable Linux based cloud computing service, which is very easy to use. Linode has a large marketplace with fully configured one click apps for whatever use case you need Linux based web servers for. Be at WordPress development and hosting. If you're new to self-hosting apps, check out Cloudron, which is like a marketplace inside Linode's marketplace. Some tasty marketception right there. Cloudron comes with over 100 cloud apps to test on your servers, all installed through a simple web UI. They also have a variety of game server hosting options for you scrubs out there. And considering that we're currently mid apocalypse and physical hardware is very difficult to get your hands on, if you have heavy compute applications, Linode offers affordable options for that, be it CPU intensive, RAM intensive, or GPU intensive workloads. If this sounds good to you, sign up using the link in my description below for a $100 60 day credit. And here we have the peasant e pin system, which I can't wait to get into. I'll take the side panel off in a moment because it's very glary. But first, let's have a look at the state of the rest of the system. Because as you can see on the top, there's quite a lot of dust. It wasn't even just basically wiped down, which does not bode well for the state of the custom loop in there. I think it's going to be pretty gross. Around the back, we've got a pretty standard rear I.O. You can see that the motherboard's pretty basic because it's got a Mesozoic period port over here. Uh, but other than that, everything's pretty standard power supply wise uh that actually kind of looks like an evga power supply i'm not sure we'll we'll double check that when we get into it now the first thing that you'll notice on the inside here if you're a massive nerd like i am is the fact that again there's only one ram stick in here at this point i feel like i'm in some ridiculous fever dream where i'm being haunted by systems that only have incorrect ram configurations in them and the thing that makes it worse is the fact that under this gratuitous open loop there's a ryzen 5 2600 which is a ryzen cpu and ryzen cpus are the thing in the world that hates single channel ram more than i do i feel I feel like at this point these PC buy videos are just turning into David gets angry at RAM. Without a partner, you're nothing but garbage. Let's have a closer look at said gratuitous open loop because we've got some fancy EK action here that does have some some very stained looking tubing here, but that's not the most concerning part about this loop for me. When you go down to the reservoir, Look at that, there's like no liquid in there anymore. Uh, but when it comes to the rest of the specs of the system, let me actually just fix this, it's really bothering me. Come on, stick. Stick! Okay, let me just, there we go, there we go, problem solved. Okay, with that out of the way, let's have a look at the rest of the system, which is actually pretty well specced out. The motherboard we have under here is an ASRock B450 board, and it's a decent budget B450 option. As far as the CPU goes, like I mentioned before, it's a Ryzen 5 2600 Ryzen CPU, which again is a good mid-range CPU. As far as the graphics card goes, we've got a GTX 1060. Around the back, we've got some reasonable cable management that kind of just looks like something I cable managed. And we have a budget EVGA power supply. I think this is their, their BQ series. Uh, so this is probably like a 500 watt power supply that we have here. And then we've got a loose SSD in here, which I'm gonna try and savage out. I love that it's in the SSD caddy that goes over here. They could just, oh, it, does, it doesn't reach. That's probably why they didn't mount it there. Okay, so with that, let's fire up this peasant EP system and see what temperatures we get on this Ryzen 5 Ryzen CPU <laughs> that has a 240 millimeter radiator cooling it. Do we have power? I don't see any LEDs anywhere, but whatever. Let's just go straight into it. Okay, there we go. Okay, no, no, no. There is exactly the minimum amount of liquid in the loop for it to work. 
Yo, it's not even any quieter than like an air cooler on it. <laughs> okay, but we've we've booted into Windows, uh, which they didn't even have a Windows key on it. What the hell? Yeah, this is just a fresh install of Windows. So uh, let's install some software and then we're gonna try and game on it and see how amazing the temperatures are on that on that 2600. Oh wow, look at those CPU. <laughs> I guess that's why you want to put a custom loop on a Ryzen 5 2600. The temperatures are so unbalanced. You've got like borderline thermally throttling graphics card with like pretty much ambient temperature CPU temps. It also seems like they set the CPU core clock to 3.6 gigahertz. So it's not auto boosting and it hasn't been overclocked at all. Like 3.6 gigahertz is pretty low for a 2600. So what I'm gonna do is put auto boost on, I guess, and see how much higher it clocks, considering those ridiculously low temperatures. Oh, that's weird. The auto boost only takes it to 3.7 gigahertz. I mean, that is the all core reading, but still it seems pretty low. So here we have it running at 4.1 gigahertz all core, and we're still not over 40 degrees Celsius, which is pretty crazy, although, the biggest bottleneck here when it comes to the performance of the system is definitely not the core frequency of the CPU. Ah, missed every shot. But it's the RAM configuration. Because not only is it just 8 gigs, but it's also single channel and it's very slow RAM. So... Yeah, that's, that's definitely what's holding the system back here. I just love that they have this ridiculous open loop on a 2600 and then manually clock it on the base frequency of the CPU. They don't even have turbo boost running. This should be really easy to do, even though there isn't like a dedicated drain port or whatever, but because it's soft line, uh, I can just unscrew the pump res combo, which is just being held down by two screws and then I can move it out of the system and then drain it here. So yeah, hopefully that goes well. Let's, let's try that out. Yeah, so we just had the two screws holding it in place. And then as you can see, we can kind of easily bring the pump res combo out, uh, out of where it was before. So that's, that's nice and easy. Let me just unplug it. That's the beauty of Softline. The color of this fluid kind of makes it seem like the loop's kidneys have failed. Oh, this always feels so precarious. It didn't over tighten the, the compression fitting, so that's good. Oh, got some red Kool-Aid going. Ooh, ooh, no, don't do that. This seems very stainy. Oh, there we go. I may also have ruined my workspace a little bit. See, that's one of the things that I always forget to do is have paper towel at hand when, when working with a loop like this. So finally, I'm gonna open up this block and have a look inside. It doesn't look like there's any kind of like biological residue inside, so it shouldn't be too gross. I think the biggest issue is gonna be cleaning off the staining because whatever they use to color the liquid is is very pervasive. Like I've been trying to wash it off my hands and I just, just can't get it off, but let's have a look inside. That is actually in surprisingly good condition there. You can see that there's no fungus growing over here or anything. So that's pretty good. Uh, let's give it a bit of a rinse and see how much that actually helps. And just like that, it's already looking pretty good. So I just need to rinse it a couple times and it'll be fine. At the end of the day, all of these components were in better condition than I was expecting, actually, because you see some real horror stories of stuff happening to custom loops. Yeah, there may be a little bit of pink staining here and there, but all of this stuff is still very usable, except for the tubing, which, yeah, it's not gone well for that. I actually don't know what coloring they used that stains this hard, uh, but there was no bacterial buildup or anything. I may actually use it for a different build. Let me know down in the comment section what you think I should liquid cool with this stuff. Uh, and then on a final note, I just want to quickly explain to those of you that don't understand why I was making fun of this system, because the actual PC is relatively well specced out, except for a couple of 
pretty big shortcomings. Garbage. The problem is that this decent custom loop kit costs about 350 US dollars. Whereas that system, when it was bought, would have had about I don't know, 550, maybe $600 worth of parts in it. They definitely could have spent the $350 that they used on what is essentially an e -peen purchase uh, to fix the shortcomings of that system. Like putting a proper kit of RAM in it and upgrading the graphics card to like a 1070 or a 1070 Ti with a decent cooler on it. That would have had a huge performance benefit actually. Uh, they also could have put a better power supply in it. Uh, stuff like that would have been much better. Whereas buying a custom loop for that system is a little bit like if your city had a billion dollar budget a year and then spent $500 million of it on a bunch of gold plated used panty vending machines or whatever. Like, I guess somebody would have enjoyed it, but it's not going to fix the homelessness crisis. But on the other hand, if your only priority is a custom loop, then I guess why not? I'm not going to tell you what to do with your life. Uh, I'm just going to buy it when you're done with it and then make fun of you on the internet. <laughs> so with that, thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please like it subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one and until the next video bye bye